Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Kat, and for today, we are going to be ranking all of my Nomad Cosmetics palettes. As the title showed, it is just all of them, and this is, this is all of them. I've got a lot. <laughs> so we are going to be ranking absolutely all of them. I think I have close to 100% of the palettes that they have to offer. So we're just gonna immediately jump right in because it's so, so many. <laughs> we are definitely going to be swatching as we go and I would love to hear from you guys in the comments section which ones of these palettes you guys have, what's your favorite, least favorite, all of that jazz. I am just so, so excited. As you guys know, I talk about Nomad all the time. I love them so, so much. And so this is just an awesome way for me to kind of show off my collection that I have and why I love their palettes so much. All right, so since we're gonna be doing swatches, I'm gonna roll up my sleeves so we can get to work here. But the first palette up is going to be the Studio 54 palette. It's a quad. I do like the sparkliness of the, the cover. However, the four shades that were inside of here, um, they were not super great for me. They didn't work all that well, kind of got that hard pan feeling very, very quickly. But this is also definitely one of the earlier palettes. Uh, I don't even think you can get it anymore on their website. Can't really blame them. Their formula has gotten so, so good. Just, I mean, especially all of the palettes that they released this year and last year. It's just absolutely amazing. And so the fact that this one that was an older one wasn't as good, no biggie as far as I'm concerned. So then the next one up is the Home for the Holidays palette. I kept it in its packaging because it's just so cute. All of the colors of the rainbow. I mean, I just absolutely love it. And then it has, to me, I like to think that this looks like a little doggo. And so that's what we're going with. <laughs> and inside of there, Again, we have this super fun, but in red, sparkly. And then inside you have a rainbow palette, all of the colors of the rainbow, as well as that white and black shade. The black shade is the only one that is a matte shade. Everything else is a metallic. And so it's really, really fun. Let's go ahead and swatch the shade Fur Babies, this really nice kind of greenish, shade greenish teal i would say look at that Ooh, so so pretty i mean just such a solid shade i mean i love their metallic shades they're really nice and buildable very smooth formula and so pigmented i just oh i absolutely love them and so this palette if you are wanting a good rainbow shimmer metallic palette this is the one to get because it is all of the shades of the rainbow as a metallic shade. But I think the main reason for, for me on why this one was uh, towards the very bottom is just because it is all shimmers aside from just the black shade. And I find that a little bit hard to put a more like, I don't know. I, I, I need to, like, I, I don't have that great of a color vision to where, like, if I just have a rainbow palette that I can kind of put something together other than just, like, using one of the shades. And so I think that's why I prefer the other palettes more, is that they just, they they help to create the, the look for me because I can see the color story, how I would put it together. So with that in mind, the next one up is going to be the Venice Simplon Express palette, and this is a very velvety palette, very, very nice. And then inside you have a mix of neutral tones and very colorful tones. The greens are definitely more on the grungy side, which I really, really like. I'm not as big of a fan of like neutral palettes as we know. I'm getting to where I like them a little bit more, but still kind of on the fence. And so the fact that half of this palette is neutral shades is just kind of like meh. And then I, I feel like out of this entire palette, the only shades that I really am leaning toward are the two green ones and then the gold, because that I can definitely see myself putting a look together. We will go ahead and swatch the Venice shade because that is a lovely duochrome. So here we go. It is a gold, kind of a olivey goldish green to brown. And that is very, very nice very solidly opaque and I mean you can very clearly see that shift and so really beautiful again the formula is outstanding it's just 
this particular palette didn't really speak to me. They do also have the larger Venice version, and so that gives you a little bit more variety on the number of shades. I just wanted to grab at least the, the mini one, but it's definitely a palette that I don't grab frequently just because there are so many other color stories that I really, really grab. <laughs> So with the neutral palettes in mind, the next one up is going to be the Toscana palette because this is all neutrals and it is more warm toned neutrals. Um, aside from like this guy right here and mm, maybe these two, um, but definitely this guy is a cool tone, but everything else is definitely more of those like orangey reddish undertones for the neutral shades. And so it's just not one that I really gravitate toward. But if you were wanting a palette that is really, really great for just the every variation of neutral, then this is a good one for that. So next up, and the last of the small, I thought it was kind of funny as I was putting together my, my ranking, that all of the small palettes ended up at the very bottom, and then the bigger palettes were the ones that were definitely higher up on the list. And so the last of the small ones is the, uh, the Lago di Como palette, and that is this guy and definitely more of the types of shades that I would reach for. Really nice blues and greens. The, the yellow tones are also really, really nice. Um, it's got a good mix of matte to, to metallic shades. Why don't we swatch the Bella Figura, which is this nice navyish blue tone here. And again, still so nice and smooth with that metallic formula. Really nice and opaque. I mean, look at that shade, it's so nice. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the color story itself is really, really nice. I think that the main reason why this one was lower on my list is not because of the color story, because I definitely love the color story. I think it was more so just that since Nomad has grown, they have introduced so many more amazing formulas and shades that like, Again, there are just other palettes that I gravitate towards more, which is weird. <laughs> but I do love this particular color story. And so if you were in, like if you were someone that enjoys those blues and greens, it's a great palette to get if you were someone that prefers those smaller palettes. I just like the 12 to 15 pan palettes. Those are like my ideal size palette. So Next up, we have the Berlin Underground, which some of you might be surprised that this is lower on my list because we know I love some good grunge greens. And that is this bad boy right here. And when I tell you that trying to rack and stack the remainder of these palettes was almost borderline nightmarish for me because I, I could not choose because I love all of them. And so the whole time I'm like, having a mini panic attack being like, I still love you. Like, I feel like it's the same thing as like when you have to, like when you're decluttering something and you're like, I don't want you to feel like I don't love you. I just, there are others that maybe I love slightly more and it's like an internal crisis that you're having. That's probably a problem I need to deal with. <laughs> but it definitely was hard for me to choose, but I just, this palette, so it has so many amazing metallics in there that are all so nice and grungy. I mean, this entire top row here, I'm holding it upside down to save you from the mirror. <laughs> But this entire row is just so awesome. The cool tone, grungy nature. If you're wanting more of the warm tones, that's up here. And then you've got a super fun color row. So it's got like everything you want. I think the main reason why this was a little bit lower on my list is that again, it is primarily metallics. There are only one, two, three, three-ish, because the black shade has some uh, some sparkles in it. Um, so there are really only three matte shades in here. And I do like having a nice mix of matte to shimmer ratio. And so that's the only reason why this one wasn't higher up. But let's go ahead and swatch one of these guys. We're gonna go with the Hanza one, uh, which is this kind of coppery shade right here. Um, and I mean, I definitely love this palette just in general because it is the one from Germany. And so it was really nice for me to just kind of go through and read all of the fun German names of the shades and everything. So here is this guy. Look at how good and grungy that is. Yes. 
and again not too overbearing with the shine on that metallic which really lends itself towards that grungy nature which is really really nice so opaque i mean just immediately pigmented on there i love it so really nice palette Again, I just, I, I love all my babies equally, but some I love a little more equally, I guess. So the next one up we have is the Cartagena palette, and this guy is super fun. Love all of the bright colors, and then when you open it up, look at it. And I think why this one was a little bit higher up for me than for the Berlin Underground one is that recently I've been on like a huge kick where I just absolutely love creating sunset looks. And so the yellow to orange to purplish vibe for me was just really, really fun. And so I think that's why it was a slight step up. But let's go ahead and swatch this fun fuchsia shade right here because that is a super bright color. Let's see how pink it is. Look! Ooh. Yes, that is a very good pinkish shade. And even kind of as it, like, as I'm moving my arm, it almost goes a little bit between, like, pink and ever so slight. A little bit of purple undertone on there, which is very, very nice um, and really kind of adds a little bit more depth to that shade. So just really like this palette a whole lot. Love the bright colors of it. And then we have the American Parks palette. And this guy, also a bit of some neutral tones in there, but really enjoyed this um, just because it has really fun lines of colors where I could very clearly see myself creating looks with that. Again, those kinds of sunset tones on the outside edges, and then the really fun greens and blues in there. And this guy actually had uh, some interesting shimmers on there. Again, a little bit different of the formulas between metallics versus kind of so like a smoother, creamier shimmer texture. And you definitely had a couple multi-chromes in here. So we will go ahead and swatch Big Bend, which is one of the multi-chromes, because that guy kicks between like several shades. And that is also one of those creamier shades. All right, here we go. So it has that darker grayish black base, and then it goes between goldish to pink to purple. So you can definitely see the darker base and then a bit more of that goldish shimmer on top and then ever so slight some of that pinkish shimmer as well and then it just kind of ever so slightly kicks to a purple as well and so on this guy it was definitely more of a grungy version of that because the base kicks in a little bit stronger than you would see on some other multi-chromes and so it creates that more grungy gray tone to it but then you have those those lighter kicks of the gold and the, the pink a little bit of a greenish olive in there as well and then some of that purple so you can just kind of see those as like those slight pops of color which is really nice it, there's a very similar multi-chrome that i've seen a lot recently where it it does kind of that same color shift between like the yellow yellowish gold into pinks and purples and greens um, but the base isn't quite as strong on there so you're getting those brighter colors um, but because of that it's not quite as grungy as this guy is which is a nice difference I love the other shade too it's just nice to have different ways that companies are playing with that particular shade so really really enjoyed this guy and you can I'm kind of like getting to the point where I don't have anything bad to say about any of the palettes and it was really hard to rank everything because I'm like I love all of it. <laughs> so then the next one up that we have is their Shanghai Ying Yang palette. This guy they did stop selling but I, I picked it up before they took it off the market and it is a very beautiful palette. You have two mirrors on here it kind of opens like a book. You have a rainbow side on here with very similar shades to the holiday palette that was at the bottom of the list. And then you have really nice uh, matte neutral shades on this side, more of those earthy tones. And so I, I especially love this earthy tone side and I just thought it was so beautifully put together. And so even though you can't get it, um, I did want to keep it in my list because I do reach for it and I really really enjoy it and so that is where that guy fell. And then the next one up is one of their more recent releases. We have the Paradise palette and this guy is so so cute and colorful with the turtles on it and the little fish like 
look at it. It's just so cute. And then the palette on the inside, just all of the absolutely gorgeous bright colors. I feel like this would work perfectly for the springtime as well as for the summer because some of the shades do run a little bit more pastel. Some of them are definitely a little bit more bright for the summertime. So either way, all of the shades work out really, really nicely. And one of my favorite combos on here is these three shades right here because this corally orange shade is so gorgeous. The camera does not do it justice. It is just so stunning. And then pairing it with the matte green shade and then the green shimmer, oh, it's so pretty. But we will go ahead and swatch the orangish shade so you guys can see just how nice and bright this orange shade is. And again, the camera is not doing it justice because it is such a gorgeous bright shade. I mean, almost borderline neon. And so as I come in closer and the ring light is kind of kicking on there, you can see a little bit more of the shine of it. And that shine is realistically like what you're seeing primarily on there. And it is such a gorgeous orange shade. I mean, I absolutely love that shade. I think we'll also swatch the shark shade because we know I love a good mermaid shade and that is a mermaid shade. So let's go ahead and swatch that guy. It is a little bit of a different formula to what the orange one is. The orange one is a little bit more of a chunky, whereas the shark shade is a little bit more of that kind of smoother consistency, a bit more similar to this guy. But look at that. It's got a little bit of those greenish white sparkles with the blue. Oh, it is such a gorgeous, gorgeous shade. I mean, ooh, I, I even like these two paired together. I love that blue to orange color combo. I think it looks really, really nice. So I just, ugh, this palette is so, so fun. I mean, if you are wanting a whole lot of color variation on there and having it be really fun shades, the Paradise palette is definitely a great one to grab. All right, we are into the top six now. <laughs> and the next one up is going to be the Haunted Europe palette. I definitely, this is one of the, the two where I kept the outer container because I just absolutely love this color scheme on here. It's so spooky. I just, oh, I, it's like an old timey painting with kind of those like more beigey, orangey, I don't know. It, it's, I just, I love everything about the packaging. And then when you go into it, if you have not seen this already, this is a super fun cover. It switches between this like lady and then this skull lady with a red coloring thing. I mean, it's just, it's so cool to see how it switches around on there. Very spooky vibes. And this guy is definitely well loved for me. You can see some of like, this guy has been gouged so much because I absolutely love that shade. I mean, so many of the, like this color story is so fun to me. Like these are such good neutral shades with the golds and the this like, the Catacombs one is really just such an awesome, silverish gray, but with some brownish green undertones. The the Mary Cemetery one is like this, like it looks mint green, but then also goes into like this kind of more grayish tone. It's just, they're all such awesome shades. I will definitely swatch one of the gold shades for you guys though. Why don't we go with, hmm, I think we'll do the Huska Castle one, which is this guy right here. So if you love a good grungy gold metallic. Look at that. Such a good gold shade. Very nice and pigmented. It's not super yellowy, also not super orangey. It's like that perfect in between where it's that, that awesome grunge shade, which I feel like for fall time frame is just absolutely perfect. And it has such a good mix of matte shades to shimmers, to metallics. I mean, I love that they even included like these purplish tones in there because I, th my favorite color scheme for Halloween is purple, orange, and green. Like those will forever be my favorite three shades. And I feel like a lot of people feel that way. <laughs> and so the fact that they included, you've got your oranges, your greens, and your purples, along with a whole bunch of other things to create a lot of different variety. Love it. All right, next up we have the Provence palette, which is their French palette. And it is definitely super cute. 
like a little French Riviera on the front there. And then when you open it up, look at this bad boy. There is just something about this color tone that just speaks to me. I don't know if it's that I love the color combo of like a deep violet with like a bright yellow. I don't know what it is. And the yellow needs to be more of that grungy, like mustardy yellow. And then you have these beautiful burgundy into like reddish wine and then pink shades. I absolutely love that. And then this line, I mean, this is a stunning, stunning line that is like kind of a darker grayish blue tone on there, but just absolutely beautiful. I love how cool toned it is. And so the whole thing just works really, really beautifully with each other. And I, I cannot get over it. It's also two rows of matte shades. And then the middle line is all of your metallics. And so I really like that, that they, they gave a lot of good variation and it all goes from lighter to darker shades so you've got a good range of matte tones where you can have just the lighter ones you can also deepen it up with that bottom row so i think that gave it a lot of different options which is really really awesome and so why don't we let's see here what kind of color have i not swatched a lot of Ooh, you know what we're gonna do i don't speak a whole lot of french and so <sighs> I would probably butcher this Flute à Corset, um, I'm unsure, but this is a really nice duochrome that goes between a pinkish and kind of goldish orangey tone. And so we will go ahead and swatch that. It's a really stunning shade that has a lot of interesting undertones to it. So it definitely starts off very pink, but then has like a purplish blue and peachy tones on there. So you can, you can definitely see the pink. And then when I come in close, those kind of purplish blue sheens to it. And then like this peachy orange undertone. As I flex my arm, you can kind of see more of that orangey. But just very interesting how it shifts. And so because of that, that particular metallic fits not just with the ones that are on this line, but fits beautifully with this line of matte shades, with the yellows, really goes with all of the shades because it would just be a beautiful topper or as a combo, however you would want to do that. So I just absolutely love that shade. It is so, so nice. And I am definitely going to be using a lot more of this palette. Um, it, it was a more recent purchase for me. I didn't grab it right as it came out. And so I have not used it as much as some of the other palettes, but this color story just already speaks to me. So I am very excited to be using more of it. All right, we are on to number four. And this is the only other one where I kept the exterior packaging. And this is the Monteverde palette. And I kept it because of the outline of the sloth because I had to, it was so cute. And I, I just, I love how everything has been kind of cut out on there. We have the beautiful birds that have been cut out. So only a little bit of it is this super bright color. But then when you take it out of the packaging, you get the full blown color on there where everything kind of blends together into this gorgeous, gorgeous painting. You can still see the sloth. <laughs> and I think sloths are adorable. <laughs> But I also think you've got like a little frog down here and then you've got a snake around one of these branches. You've got the birds still and then you've got a cute little monkey that's like in the gold filigree that they have on there. So cute. So I really, really enjoy that. And then if you were wanting all of the bright colors, ba bam look at it. It's so beautiful and i love that they have a lot of good grunge colors as as well as a lot of really bright neon shades and so if you are wanting like really bright neon shades this is the palette to go with because i mean all of the kind of pinkish purple shades super bright you've got the neon green shade this absolutely stunning neon yellow it is really hard to make a pigmented yellow and this guy succeeded i made a look that was again one of those more sunsetty looks <laughs> that i really really enjoyed but all of these colors blended together beautifully. The deep purple was very, very bold on the under eye. And so I ended up putting together a really nice, just all matte look with this palette. And the shimmers are also really gorgeous. This Hanging Bridges shade is a very interesting duochrome. So we will go ahead and swatch that guy real quick so you can see what that one looks like. 
is this guy right here, starts off lime greeny, but has a really interesting kind of goldish yellow to pink on there. So you can kind of see where the light is hitting it, that it goes a little bit more pinkish, and that's that, that pink shimmer on top that it'll go with. So wherever the light hits it, you're getting that kind of pop of pinkish peachy tone and then the rest of it is this really nice limey kind of grungy green shade which is just absolutely gorgeous and several of the shades in this palette are super fun with how they kind of have these interesting shifts you've got green mountain which is just an absolutely gorgeous mermaidy tone goes between like a, a deeper teal blue into an evergreen into like a hint of purple and then you've got magical mist that is also this like purple to silver to kind of bluish to green just all of these crazy things so the shimmers are also very much standouts in this palette along with all of the really bright matte shades and now we are into the top three and when I tell you that this was like literally the most impossible decision for me I cannot even express that enough because it was so hard because I love these three palettes they are like far and away my favorites. I mean, all of the palettes are so, so nice and I grab all of them many times throughout the year, but these three, I grab all the time. And so number three is going to be the Whistler palette. And it is so cute. Just the whole entire theme is all around the ski slopes, ski lodges, snowboarding, all of it. It is so cute. And then as I look at this color story, I'm like, why is this not higher on the list? But I already know why, because the other two palettes, it's gonna be the same reaction when I open them. This is the color story on this guy, and I mean, these three rows right here, like, absolutely stunning. Again, very similar to the Lago de Como with that color story, just that the way in which they made the greens and the blues and the golds it just, they're just a little bit different, but that difference was all that it took for it to speak to me more because the matte shades are these deeper mattes of brown and evergreen and you have this gorgeous navy blue. Then you also have a couple of these lighter, more pastel matte shades and then these shimmers, this deeper gold shimmer, the teal shimmer, I mean, the Ski Bum one we're gonna swatch. It looks light blue. It has a purple to light blue to mint green shift on there. So it is absolutely just so beautiful. So here we go. That is this guy right here. So again, starts off with that blue. You can already kind of see hints of the purple and the mint green on there. There's a little bit of that purple sheen on top. You can really see the purple to blue and then just ever so slight around the edges it's a hint of like a tealish to mint green kind of shift on there. So gorgeous as a pastel shade. And you can use it as like just to layer on top of a matte shade or you can use it as a standalone and build it up. It is so beautiful. And then some of these other shades that are on this side, the fact that they have this deeper rose, <laughs> rose, the fact that they have this deeper reddish category on here with this kind of raspberry shade is just so beautiful. This deeper blue metallic, oh, it is stunning. This copper brown, I mean, all of these shades together were just absolutely gorgeous to me. You could, I, I think that's what I love about the way that they put their color stories on the larger pans together is that you can create a monochromatic look or you can mix them together into these really unique blends of colors. And this one for me is definitely up there as like one of the top palettes that I reach for. And then the number two palette. Again, when I look at it, I'm like, why is this not higher up? We have the Hudson Valley palette, very recently released for the fall. And look at this color story. If this is not perfection for the fall, I, I don't know what is. It is, I mean, the colors on here are truly perfect. And what's interesting is that they only have three metallic shades, these three in the middle, but I don't even feel like I need more than that. Like, 
this side is absolutely stunning as all of your cool toned earthy shades, right? So you've got your more grayish browns and then your, your greens and blues, but all very earthy. And then on this side, you have all of your leaf changing shades. You've got your yellows, oranges, into deeper reds, into burgundy, and then brown. And so it shows that entire transition of the leaves throughout the season. And then you have the three metallics as your like pops of shine in there. But I feel like I didn't even need more than those three. Like this entire palette to me is just absolutely stunning. And so if I am ever wanting to create a fall palette, I can just immediately grab this guy and throw together an absolutely stunning matte look. And then if I want to add more variation of shimmers than what they have in here, I can easily do that. But this palette already gets you started really, really well for fall. And I just, it's so gorgeous. Let's go ahead and swatch. Hmm. Let's go with, I, w I really want to do the lime green one. <laughs> It's such a beautiful, bright lime. It's like an apple green, like a Granny Smith apple green. And there she blows. It is so gorgeous of a shade. Really, really stunning. I absolutely love it. I just, this whole palette, it had to be my number two. And for anyone that has been around since the start of 2021 with me, you will know why this is my number one. I, the day it arrived, I made a video with it and I have filmed endless looks with this guy because it is by far my favorite palette, not just for the color scheme, but the memories attached with it. I loved my trip to Iceland and I felt like the color scheme in this palette so beautifully captured the colors and the sights and everything that I saw while I was there. And so this has not just the beautiful color story and being able to create looks with it, it has those memories tied to it for me. And so that is why this will forever be one of my favorite palettes. I mean, the icy blues on this side, the fiery reds and oranges, the beautiful pastels from the Northern Lights. I mean, you catch all of it in this palette. It is such a gorgeous palette. I cannot, I just, I cannot. <laughs> So I will go ahead and swatch the River Glacier shade for you guys because that is such a beautiful, stunning, like light silvery white metallic. Look at that. I think we see so many times that there are these silver metallic shades that are very like gunmetal silver, right? But this silver is just almost borderline kind of pearly white and with just ever so slight that hint of silverish gray in there. And so it's such a unique metallic to my collection that I just, I absolutely love it. And all of the metallics in here are so, so stunning. This beautiful cranberry red shade, gorgeous. I, I love all of the different shade variations of the matte shades versus the shimmers. It is just, this will forever be my favorite palette, probably my favorite palette out, out of my entire collection. Like I, I cannot speak highly enough about this palette. It is easily one of my top favorites. And so if you have not picked this one up and you like that color story, pick it up because it's so good. <laughs> so that was my ranking of all of my nomad palettes and i would love to know what you guys think of it what did you guys think of all of the swatches what were some of your favorite shades are there any palettes that you haven't grabbed yet that after seeing my ranking you're like mm, i should pick it up hint hint <laughs> but i would love to just know what you guys think of absolutely everything if you haven't tried out nomad yet highly recommend trying them out they are such an amazing indie brand and so I just, I absolutely love them. But give me a thumbs up if you like this, thumbs down if you did not, as we always do here. I know I personally love doing ranking videos. I love hearing your guys' thoughts. So this will forever be one of my favorite styles of videos to do. But let me know what you guys thought. And if you made it to the end of the video and you've not yet subscribed, I would love it if you would join my family here. We talk a ton about indie brands do really colorful makeup. We do all of the swatches. And so if that sounds like fun, I would love it if you join my family here. At least drop a comment down below. Let me know what you're loving these days. And other than that, you guys just go have a good one.